you're not going to make it. You should not want anything. Why are you fearful? What faith is not is fear. Oh, ye of little faith. But God desires you even more. You better take your rightful place in the kingdom of God here on earth. I ain't leaving nothing on the table what God has for me. God brought us out of darkness into the marvelous light. I say, look past what you see. Hallelujah. You got to believe that thing. Amen. And I do give honor to my husband. He already started it, and so I get emotional. Been rocking since 1987. <laughs> God brought us out of darkness into the marvelous light, saved us, and never did we think and people even said we wouldn't make it, that we would be serving God together. You better have faith in God for what you're asking him for. You better believe God for the miracle worker that he is. You better shut down the naysayer on today. God is faithful. I love you, honey. Hebrews 11, 1 and 11, 3. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made with things that do appear. Faith University, look past what you see. And I'm calling it Faith University because I believe as we're studying all these sciences and education and getting our degrees and worldly things, and we need them, we should have a degree in faith. And so I believe it's a constant, lifelong journey to build our faith up. And so I believe that God is going to give out some honorary doctorates today in faith. So get ready to receive in Jesus' name. Because if you don't know your word, if you don't know what faith is in today, you're not going to make it. Period. Faith, period. Amen. That's for Sister Keisha. <laughs> In a world filled with uncertainty, fear, sickness, corruption, injustice, and unjust, pursuing leadership roles and claiming it, it is in God that they trust, it can be easy to be overwhelmed with today's society. Some statistics say that social issues and problems that trouble today's youth and some adults our social media, peer pressure, on-screen violence, depression, bullying, drug and alcohol use and abuse, and much more. From global unrest to personal struggles, we face challenges that shake our sense of security. But in these moments, God calls us to stand firm in faith, trusting in his unchanging promises. John 16, tells us, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, because I have overcome the world. And what Jesus is saying here is that it's a continuous victory. It is a victory today that we achieve, a victory tomorrow, and in the future where we are at Christ Jesus. For us to be an overcomer means to accomplish the purpose which God has designed us. Hallelujah. NIV version. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we don't see. I say, look past what you see, because you don't have to see it anyway. Move it out the way. Faith is one of the building blocks of our spiritual life. It helps us Christians represent the kingdom of God. We are being watched. What makes serving God so different than serving the world? We have to represent God and who he is and show that our faith in God is something that everyone needs to have to get through this thing called life. 
It is the reason we all gathered here today, in person or online. Hello, online viewers. We came here believing, trusting that we will receive a word today, that we will receive healing, and we will be at peace, and we will be with like-minded individuals and encouraged on today. If we thought anything less of that, we would not be here. What are you believing God for today? Faith is what makes real things we hope for. It is the proof of what we cannot see. It's beyond what you're looking at. What faith is not is fear. The enemy of faith is fear because it contradicts the word of God. Fear disrupts our ability to think clearly and to lead us to make unwise choices. Fear causes us to take our eyes off God, believing the enemy. It is enemy focus. It is self focus. But faith is God focus. Jesus rebuked the disciples for being afraid during the storm. Can we think about a storm that maybe in our lives have happened that we were afraid that the first thing we went to was fear? And so we got to read the word because faith cometh by hearing and by hearing the word of God. If we're listening to all the nonsense around us, how can we believe God? How can our faith be increased? When he rebuked the disciples for being afraid during the storm in Matthew 8, 24 to 26, he's saying, Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? Do you have faith today? What are you trusting in today? 2 Timothy 1 and 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I can tell you that I had some fear before. Let me pick which time. I had to sit my mind with some one, two, three. <laughs> fear getting up here today. You better study to show yourself approved of workmanship. You don't need to fear if you're reading the word and you know what you're talking about. Hallelujah. I believe I overcame that today. Fear financially. Anybody can be a, a witness? Yeah. I'm just saying. It doesn't mean you didn't have enough. It, that could be the case. But it could believe that you just didn't have what you felt that you needed or what you wanted. God can give you that. What are we believing God for? Think about it. I say I got big faith. <laughs> I believe him for everything he has for me. I ain't leaving nothing on the table what God has for me. It's got my name on it and I'm taking it in Jesus name because it belongs to me and it belongs to you. You better take your rightful place in the kingdom of God here on earth. He has it for you. So I must just share the testimony. You know, it's got to because you got to know that I know what I'm talking about, right? Oh, she ain't been through nothing people think that they look at you and they think you got it all together and at times we do you think the enemy don't fight everybody he only messes with what's valuable the enemy coming for you because you valuable he wants you he desires you but God desires you even more oh it's a battle to the end it's a spiritual battle to the end and we gonna win we gonna win now and we gonna win then so I had a couple years ago, um, I recognized I wasn't being appreciated at a job. I got the degree, and then I was supposed to get promoted, and um, I wasn't. And um, I started to realize I was oppressed there. I realized um, that, you know, even though I was doing what I wanted to do, what I believe that God sent me to do it, to help students, that was me, that um, it was time for me to move. And so I um, started looking for jobs, and because I didn't get the promotion, I'm like a go-getter, and I'm like, okay, what else do I need to do? Like, that was wrong, but okay, I really want to do, be a champion in this, this work in mean, healthcare. And I, I recognized that I was like, I got to have another job first. I can't just leave my job. So I'm like, let me find a job. So I think that I'm operating in faith, but really I wasn't. Because I expected job to be there before I could leave the job. And I'm not telling you to quit your job. I'm just telling you my testimony. And so 
I'm like, I got to have this. You know, like, I'm high maintenance. <laughs> I don't want to lose nothing. I'm just saying, right? I mean, let's talk about it. What we, what we working for? I'm just saying. But I really don't want to work for nobody no more, especially when you're telling me the wrong thing to do for my people and for who I am. You asked me to come here, and now you want to take away my authority, and people are depending on me. And so I recognize how it affected me mentally. Uh, structural racism, systemic racism. Uh, it really started to weigh on me, and I'm like, you got to take care of you. I didn't recognize it all until it just all was coming to a head, and I'm like, okay, I'm not feeling good. To the point where I had to, I had to leave. Left, got treatment for myself, got myself together, got healed, but no income. Lost a substantial income. Had worked 36 years since I was 14. I paid bills, I handled a household, and even though I have my husband and I love him, that's what I knew, and so that was different. The rain came and the wind blew, and I knew what my house was stood on. But everything around me was shaking because the enemy attacked me, my son, my family. And devil, you a lie because you can't have my son or my family. What looked like I was operating in lack, I was operating much because I said, God, I trust you. I really had nothing else to do but trust him. And sometimes we get in situations where God say, I'm going to allow this to happen to you. So you have to put your faith in me. It's not in your employer. God created them too. <laughs> he knew what was going to happen. So I said, God, I want you to use me for your glory. I still want to be able to mentor nursing students. I still want to be able to advocate for health care and justice and equality and health equity. No income. It's about a year and eight months now. We ain't missed a beat. Period. Okay. I have received more than I ever received. I have went places I never went before because I was working in a place that I shouldn't have been. You got to know when to cut it off. You do what God tells you to do and you leave. But you only know that if you're seeking him in faith. You can only know that if you're in tune with your heavenly father. Don't ask nobody around you. Ask God what he wants you to do. So I said, forgive me, God. He started doing what he's doing in ministry. And I was like, I never thought. I said, I want to promote health equity. You're taking me to Africa. I'm thinking down the street. I'm thinking around the corner. He's forever faithful. Oh, I thank him on today. He's still amazing me. Yes, I'd like some extra income. But I ain't begging for nothing. I don't have a need or a want, and neither does my family. We've done more than we could ever do because we've trusted God. I want you to hear me on today. Your situation is not bigger than God. Of course, there's more to that, but let's just go on here. Don't focus on your problems. Look past what you see. You are not alone in the storm, nor are you by yourself in the fire. God is there with you. Are we trusting God for who he is in our circumstances, or are we trusting that our circumstance is too hard for God? Have you tried him? I believe that faith is a growing thing, that we continue to build ourselves up in the word of God as it says. It is a lifelong process. Since faith cometh by hearing, we have to constantly read God's word for our faith to be increased. So we are constantly learning and educating ourselves. Yes, we have formal degrees, but we are responsible to be educated. It doesn't have to be professional degree, right? We got to keep up. We got to watch and pray with what's going on today. Don't worry about who's running for what. God is not going to allow anything to happen that should not happen. Whether they are right or wrong, all the years the presidents or whoever has gone forth, I have not suffered the failure of them because I trust God. Don't worry about it. He created them too. He knew what they were going to try to do and what they're trying to do. God is faithful. We are faced with situations that challenge our faith 
And when we're faced with them, we should get a scripture that applies to our situation. God's promises are yea and amen. Read his word to find out what his promises are. Read his word to find out the truth and what is owed to you. Don't leave nothing on the table because you don't have faith in God. You got lack, but it's right here. You can't see it, but you've not operated your faith so that God can bring it to you. When it's something for you, don't have to work hard with what God has for you. You just have to be obedient. And when we're not obedient to his word, then we're going to sacrifice. Whether you're in grade school or middle school, learning a trade or certification, please continue to educate yourself. I believe that God has us in our places because he knows that he's going to always be there if we trust him. He allows some things to happen. I would say when something would come up against me, and I've had some heavy trials the past couple years, I'd be like, God, you created me for this? Really? <laughs> really, God? I mean, you trust me with this? And he says yes because he knew you before you were created in your mother's womb. He knew everything that we would go through. And he said, yep, I'm still going to create you for that because I know you'll overcome it if you take me with you. And so I trust God for trusting me in the life that he's given me. So I have a suggested order for praying and receiving God based on our progression of faith. One is to simply ask God. Go humbly and sincerely to God in prayer. Be anxious for nothing, but through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, talk to him. He already knows what you need. Two is to believe. Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and that ye shall have them. So we can't just be talking to God and we really don't believe he's going to do it for us. I believe God's going to bless such and such. Why isn't he going to bless you? Are we, are we thinking about our past mistakes? I'm so glad that when God forgives us, he forgives us, and he doesn't remember our past mistakes. If you ask him to, he throws them away. So why are you holding your past against yourself, acting like you're mediocre in the kingdom of God, like you don't deserve what God has for you? You have a right to God's promises. You have a right to live the abundant life that's here in this world today. Be the example to others that deny God, that think it's a bad time and live, that this time is bad, that we're wasting away and worried about all these other catastrophes in this world. Be the example. Stand up. Represent Jesus Christ. Speak it. Proverbs 18:21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. There are consequences from what we say. Speak life into your situation. And don't allow the naysayer and the doubters to say anything different. If you have people around you that don't believe God like you do, separate yourself. Still love them and pray for them that they receive what God has for them. But one will draw the other. You don't need anybody negative in your space. Separate yourself. My daughter had some friends that were pseudo friends, and I had to tell her. I said, I have one and two half friends from high school. That means one, we, we talk all the time, but two half, I mean, we would see each other on the street and pick it up like we never, you know, stop talking. And it's no ill will. That's good. And even when you turn 50, people act the same way. You have to change your friend zone. You know, in your circle, it might be you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and that's it. And sometimes, boo. <laughs> I'm just saying, shut it out. You can do that and still love people. You can. Be the example to them. You shall have what you say you shall have. I got a son that his name is Caleb. He's not feeling well today pray for him but he got faith to move mountains he speak it he say it he goes after it he encourages me and so I want you to be encouraged today son delay is not denial you better ask God again if he didn't answer you you ask him again 
He's waiting for you. Maybe it's some waiting you need to go to, some purging you need to go, some cleansing. Maybe you need to forgive. Maybe you need to let some things go. Forgive yourself. You're a child of the most high God. Hallelujah. So act on it in James 2, 17. Faith without works is dead. We are justified not just by our faith alone, but by our works. So act as if God has already answered your prayers. You better move in that thing. I asked God for this. I'm believing God for this. Let me prepare for it. Because he's not going to give you something that's not in his will, and he's not going to give you something that you're not ready for. That could be a demise. And you have to prepare yourself. That's the faith part. you just going to ask that God to do something that's set there? Bring the blessings, God. You better operate your faith. You better act on that thing. Then be ready to receive. Open your hands and be ready to accept what God provided, whether it be what you asked for or something different. Maybe it's better. I'm believing that it is. Because <laughs> he always exceeds my expectations. Trust his answer is always for your good. All things, whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. That faith that moved mountains. You know, my mountain is different from yours. So there's no judgment after what you think is too hard. God can do anything. We need to operate more in the, in the great things of God, especially today. People need to see us. People are believing in so many other things today. Are you trusting God for it or are you trusting yourself? Sometimes we have to look past what we see because there's a mountain in our way. The mountain is whatever you think that you cannot bear, but you have the power in Christ Jesus to do it. Faith that moves mountains is enduring faith. In the face of adversity, enduring faith never fails. James 1, 2 to 3, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work. I'm so glad patience is to her. That ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. You should not want anything. I want it all, God. Whatever you have for me, here I am. Here I am. What is your mountain on today? Is it finances, illnesses, lack of confidence, the exam, the job, bullies, unbelief? Whatever it is, speak to it and move it. Just like that. I don't see you. I'm looking past what I see because what I see will try to take me out. I'm over here, God. Whatever you have for me, I know it's greater. I know it's better. I'll take that, God. This is not the life you chose for me, God. You have greater for me. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. I'm encouraging myself today. I'm here to tell you. I'm looking for great things when we leave here today. You better look for them too. Tell God what you want. Do we consider ourselves worthy of the blessing? Do we think we can handle them? Ask yourself those questions and then pray about how God can get you ready and see you through. I don't really want the promotion. No, yes, you do. It ain't about you. When we go to our jobs, it is not about you. There is an opportunity to minister to everybody around you. You don't have to be a minister, but you have the right and the opportunity to use God's word. He has you there for him, not for you. Okay. You're going to get some perks along the way. You're going to make a lot of money. But remember why you go to work. Amen. Amen. Or, oh, uh, you know, I'm in a good place right now. Maybe being partially healed is enough. Mm -mm. It's not. I told God I can't be sick. I had some migraines, and I'm like, where did these come from? And then I realized the source. I realized some things I need to change, and I prayed about it. And then it was like four months I'm on medication. I was like, uh-uh, I don't take medication. And I'm not going to keep taking it. God, you said that I'm healed, and I don't want to take this medication. I ain't had no migraines no more. I'm off of medication. 
but I'm being obedient to his word. I'm taking care of my temple so that I can go forth and be effectively in serving him. God, I can't serve you sick. He'll heal you. I know we got different things and there are all type of conditions, but we're talking about God. Migraine is minor. Whatever you have is minor. God is a healer and he's here to heal you on today. Hallelujah. God spoke, let us make human beings in our image. This is Genesis 1, 26 to 28. Make them reflecting our nature so they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle, and yes, earth itself and every animal that moves on the face of the earth. God created human beings. He created them godlike. Reflecting God's nature, he created them male and female. God blessed them. Prosper, reproduce, and fill the earth. Take charge that's you that's us this about us take charge reproduce I did find out that the reproducing is not just having babies I found it out before I had my baby so I just want you to know that's not just what it means reproduce reproduce other ministers and leaders reproduce other men and women of God train people up your kids in the way that they should go so when they're not old what good thing can you reproduce you can. We are responsible. God gave us all of this. You think he created you to do all of this and he going to leave you hanging? He's not. I think we have to encourage each other more. We have to talk about what God has done for us more. Having faith in God doesn't mean we will avoid hardship. Ugh, right? If we had no hardship, would we trust God? Nothing's in my way. I'm just <laughs> moving on up. <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> we would not trust God. Let's just be honest, okay? I'm going to be honest. So every situation I've gone through, I look at it and I count it all joy as an opportunity to trust my God more. My heavenly Father who created me. The same God who calmed the storms for the disciples in Mark 4, 39 is the God who can calm the storms of your life. He is your refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. When the world seems unstable, let us remember that God is sovereign. He sees your trials, hears your prayers, and holds you in his hand. Isaiah 41 and 10 gives us promises. Do not fear. I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. No matter what happens in this world, our hope is in the Lord, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. When doubt arises, when fear takes hold, choose to place your trust in God. As Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 reminds us, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him. He will make your path straight. Let this be our prayer. Let this be our declaration. Lord, increase our faith. Help us to trust in you even when we don't understand. Strengthen our hearts and remind us that you are with us always, even to the end of age. God promises that nothing can separate us from his love, that he's working everything out for our good, that he's made a new creation. He promised to protect. He promised to teach us, heal us, give us peace, to be near to us, to prosper us and not to harm us. He won't condemn us. He promised to bless us. He promised victory in Christ Jesus, promises on purpose in your pain. He comforts us. He promises to strengthen us. He promised to lead and guide us, give us rest and wisdom. He promises to protect our hearts our minds from anxiety he is our firm foundation he's what our house is built on Psalm 62 61 and 2 when my heart is overwhelmed lead me to the rock that is higher than I I he always makes a way huh Oh, that's a good God. <laughs> I don't want to serve nobody else. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He will not let you fail. He promised you eternal life. He loves you and no one can separate you from his love. Hallelujah.
The world cannot promise you that, and they won't. God is the only one who keeps his promises. He's the only one who can. Faith is the fundamental fact of existence, that this trust in God, this faith in the firm down foundation, under everything that makes life worth living, it's our handle on what we can't see. The act of faith is what distinguished our ancestors, set them above the crowd. Ah! Hallelujah! Quick testimony that leads on to this. So I was like, I need to get, I started thinking about getting another degree. And over my journey, life's journey, I decided this. When I was little, I said I wanted to be a doctor. But what I meant, and people, and when I got that from family members, be a doctor, be a lawyer, be an engineer. That's what they said, because I had them in the family, and that's where the money was, right? And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to be a doctor. Had the little set. Didn't recognize then as a child and as I went on my life's journey that you can have a doctorate in anything. In the course of that journey, I ended up working in healthcare before I finished school and I learned that I love nursing. I love that one-on-one -on -one care, the time spent with God's people and I was honored to care for God's people. And so the course of that, you know, I went to school and, and got some degrees, but I didn't think about a doctorate until I was kind of like, I want to do something else and if I need another degree, then let me start looking for programs. They didn't even have doctoral programs now that they had when I was coming up. So my journey had to be my journey to get to my place, right? And so I said, let me look. I want to be this diversity champion, equity, inclusion, and justice for healthcare. I want to dispel the healthcare disparities. I want us all to live. That's a whole nother message. What can I do? Okay, if I need to do more, I can do more. But then I started thinking about it. And I enrolled in the doctoral program in 2021. It was like, everybody was like, oh, wow, okay, mom. Like, you know, yeah, I, want, I, I found a program. It, it, it was a doctorate of nursing practice in healthcare management and executive leadership. And I'm like, that's it, right? So that's how it came about. But then God said, but wait. When you were little, I told you you want to be a doctor. Here it is. And through the process, though, it was good, but then the rain came and the wind blew. And things was coming apart. And I said to God, I said, I'm almost done here. And I was feeling weary. I said, I need you to pick me up. And I need you to carry me through. And I got a little fearful in the end because I'm, I was like, and I'm not knocking business majors, but I was like, this business class is what's trying to whip me. I'm like, I can took statistics, microbiology, chemistry. What? What's this? Like, uh-uh. But the, the, the enemy was trying to fear me. And then I recognized I was fearful. I had already defended my dissertation and had this class in the way. And I talked to my sister. And she said, oh, we don't let doctoral students get that far and not finish. But I actually, after all of that and asking God to pull me through, to pick me up and carry me, I forgot that he was there. He was carrying me. I did my, my dissertation on cultural, uh, assessing cultural humility, and I used God in my presentation, and the enemy flared up in the, in the defense of rehearsal. Oh, God said, remember, everybody doesn't support what you're doing. We're not going to talk about racism, my mentor told me. I'm like, okay. Gave me a hard time about a bar graph. Like, it's looking bunched up. It was a pie graph. It was looking bunched up. Well, it's bunched up because there's no diversity at the place. <laughs> All the people of color are in here. That's why it's bunched up. I mean, what you want me to do? That's the real problem. right? I love everybody and I appreciate it, but this is just my journey and where I was. I was the only person of African descent in the group. I didn't have nobody look like me, nobody believing in the same thing, and I wasn't doing what everybody else was doing. But I know what God gave me, and I know what healthcare needs and this world needs. He wants us to live. Our lives are cut short sometimes because we lack knowledge. And we don't believe that we can be healed. And we don't believe in the God in us. Oh, devil, you a lie. I came back and did that defense. <laughs> Y'all got, there ain't nobody said nothing. The dean asked questions. And yes, I'm on point with my answers. Because I brought God in here. 
It was people in there. It's a school with the Holy Spirit. Here go my husband at graduation. Ain't nobody had a Holy Spirit up in there. I said, I did. <laughs> what you believe in God for? He'll change your plan, and that's okay. He's faithful. May you find peace, strength, and unwavering faith in God's promises. Do you want to receive his promises today? Today. He makes promises, and he will keep them. And it begins with our salvation. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. 